Welcome back to Toronto Wine Drinker, torontowinedrinker.com, joined by Antonio Fattori from Italy. He's uh, from, you know what, this is pretty awesome actually. It's very rare I get to interview people where their name is actually all over the bottles of wine. Antonio, talk to us a little bit about uh, your winery. Where are you in Italy and what do you produce? We are in Veneto, uh, not far from Verona, mm. so almost right in the middle between Verona and Vicenza, uh, okay. at the foot of the Alps, in the area of Verona, in the area of uh, DOC Suave and Valpolicella. Excellent, excellent. Now, something really interesting that you told me, we, we had a really extremely cold winter here in Canada, but you mentioned when we were talking just briefly off camera that it was very mild over in Italy, and I said, oh, that must have been great. You said it's not always great to have a mild winter, and why is that? Um, when, the, when the winter is very mild, like this year, that it was exceptionally mild this year, probably the mildest winters ever, I remember. Mm. Uh, everything survived, you know, so insect, um, mold, uh, fungus, everything survived. So the next, the next season would be very difficult, would be very tough to control the parasites. So we will have a quite trouble to control all the parasites next year. What's the, what's the main parasite that uh, makes winemakers most nervous? Oh, everything from America, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Are we talking like, is this like going back to the phylloxera days and things like that? Phylloxera, peronospora, oidium. So they all come from America. Anyway, we're mm. ready to, to fight them. But uh, <laughs> this year will be a bit more difficult than, uh, than the previous vintages. But okay. Lovely, lovely. Let's talk a little bit about the wines that we have here. We've got quite the selection. What, what wines are we looking at right here that you're producing? Uh, here we have um, one Suave, pure Suave, a Garganega 100%, a blend made with a Garganega, Pinot Grigio, Trebbiano di Suave and Durella. That is a local, is an indigenous variety mm. and three different expressions of uh, Valpolicella's wine. Valpolicella, basic Valpolicella, Ripasso and Amarone. Let's talk about this Amarone for a second because something I've noticed, at least in Toronto restaurants, it seems, or people that are drinking wine in Toronto, seems to be Amarone is really big right now. It seems very trendy. People are really, really into it, uh, more than they used to be. Why do you think that trend is happening? Where is that coming from? Amarone is very interesting now all over the world and even in Italy. Uh, 20 years ago, to be honest, the Amarone was, was very in trouble, in a big trouble. So nobody wanted to any more Amarone because we Amarone was considered a wine, a very old style wine, it's too thick, too heavy, too high in alcohol. So in a, in absolutely absolutely not trendy wine anymore. Mm. And in the last 20 years, Amarone started to increase in quality and in a perception of public and now is a good wine all over the world is a considered a very good wine all over the world there is one specific characteristic of all Valpolicella's wine the tannin so the tannin of Valpolicella is very sweet are very mild so they don't need to be aged for years year to be to become to become to mature but they mature very very quick very quick then you can age the wine for other reason so if you want wine with a different complexity more complexity more volume different body but the tannin are always very very mild nice. Nice. and so make the difference okay now out of the so we've got five wines right here you're obviously you're going to be proud of all of them because you made them but we won't tell anybody unless they watch this video but let me know someone comes over to your house out of these five wine which one's your baby which one do you like the most out of these five um, I think the Ronca is the m is my favorite wine in terms that, uh, in general, when you have a great quality white wine, you need also to have a fantastic wine making. Uh, why for the red, you need to have a great quality red wine, and then the wine is almost done. If you don't do a big mistake, so the transformation the, from grapes to wine is almost done. Mo for the whites, it's different. You have, must have a great quality grapes and a great benefit wine making. And especially for the this wine, it was a blend that I thought 15 years ago. Um, as always, I took a idea from uh, from uh, another producer, a great producer from Friuli, right. that uh, made a blend with a different grapes. But my idea was uh, to find something. Uh, a different wine, it's completely new, where the single wine participated in the blend had a kind of synergy. And so the wine now 
uh, it's totally different. And one age in a very good way. 2011 now is just reaching its best quality now, but the 2010, 2009 are very, very good. And the wine age, in a completely different way, respect the single wine that get into the blend. Now, this particular wine, then, is it safe to say, like uh, the one that's produced, say, next year for 2014, would it come into its own in 2017? Is it around three years, you're, you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, three years. Yes. I'd be remiss, your, your name is on this stuff, you're obviously very proud of, you've done a great job. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask a little history of the family and the winery, if you could briefly just give us a little bit of the, your story. But the story is also most written on the name, Fattori, <laughs> and the translation is Fattori is farmer, so I can't imagine one of my industry doing, I don't know, anthropology, <laughs> so, yeah. so they, they were farmer. Okay. And my grandfather started to produce wine, not just for self-consumption, but just to, for, for wine to be sold to the local uh, uh, trattoria or restaurant in Verona, in Vicenza. And then my father, and then I took over from my father in uh, quite a long time ago, in 1977. So I have a few harvests on my back at the moment. Lovely. Well, you've been doing it for years. I know you're going to have continued success uh, in the future. And thanks a lot for talking to me. And we'll, hopefully we'll see you again soon, OK? Thank you very much. Thank you.